Bismillahirrahman Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hasbun Allah wa Nima al Wakil The Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear and yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you art with me Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup runneth over and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Tuesday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. It's been a rainy morning here in parts of Kanda, Kaneshi, Bubuashi, and uh, the environment. So if you step out, you want to be very careful. Uh, don't speed. We need you alive so we can all build our nation together. This morning, I want us to talk about something that will happen on the 27th of April. We call it the True Dugana and is our own initiative for professional cyclists for those who like to cycle for fun or ride for fun for uh, those who also are part of a grouping who want to cycle and this this year we're going to quo uh, the scenic um, village or town of quo we'll leave media general here in accra kanda and they will ride all the way to quo and uh, 150 Ghana cities per person if you're single and if you're a group of 10 riders uh, 100 Ghana cities each 053-1100-927 is the magic number to call and 053-220-927 is the number to call if you desire to sponsor and I encourage you to indeed sponsor Tour du Ghana um, 053-1100-927 and 053-220-927. Please call those numbers now and get some assistance. Tell them that you have money that you want to push into this. Thanks to DHL so far, uh, they, they are sponsors for this big one. And um, we encourage all others to get on board as well as we um you know do do a very nice one last year was amazing we went all the way to um elmina and uh, this year we're changing the gear we're going up to the east so you want to come along with us and join us it's fun it's very very fun i tell you very very fun indeed Johnny's yesterday nice. i got a, a love letter from a listener a regular listener and a viewer of johnny's bite who had an issue and i only got involved in the issue because when i listened to the issues they were genuine here was a senior citizen of the republic of ghana who runs a school who contracted uh, an individual or a company to roof her building school building part of the school building this gentleman takes the money invite. and decided to play what we call in ghana Kwani, Kwani, Moni, Moni with her. Hide and seek. So the matter actually went uh, to the court. They had an arbitration. The gentleman um, agreed to certain terms and conditions, but he kept defaulting and he kept running away. So when the senior citizen came to me, she said, well, this is the situation. And she narrated everything. I listened to her. She came with a friend or a sister. I don't know what relations they have. But then she told me the story. And I said, okay, this is good. I got the corresponding documents. We did our checks. We did our investigations. And we saw that it was clean. So we went ahead, as we always do. Guess what? As we speak, the building has been roofed fully, completely roofed. And so yesterday... She sent us a love letter. And the love letter is homemade. You can, you can see it. As for me, I'm a Yomobi, so you can see the love letter. Yomobi, it's uh, homemade right there. And it's addressed to me with a beautiful hamper. She gave us uh, lots, lots of uh, some good, good, good beverages that we can use. And inside this love letter, and this is a scorecard, by the way. Inside this love letter is a poem that she authored for us, Johnny's which I'd like to share with you. It says, a poem for you. The Real Solution Center. From the east rises the sun. The same settles in the west. Another sun rises from 3 FM and settles the matter. And the burning issues, 
the plague that plagued the nation with a scorecard record and beaten and marched. 3FM Sunrise, 3FM Sunrise, the real solution center of our time. But be it national matter, be it community matter, be it one's personal matter, solutions are found at this center. No libi libi, no labalaba, dubious, means employed. Only a few harmless bites and bang, there's the solution. Positive results that bring smiles to all concerned. And the one behind the bites, the one greater than the greater Accra, Johnny Hughes. This is from Madame Adole Moli Brown. She sent this Johnny one to us, bite. authored the poem, brought us a nice hamper, which we'll share with the team. And this is a scorecard. And when you read the first line of the last paragraph, bring it back. She said, no libi libi, no laba laba. You know what that means? When she first came to me, she asked how much it was going to cost for us to pursue this matter. I said, oh, I don't take money from people. The fact is that I don't take money from people to do any of the investigative work and all the work that I do. And everybody who has come to me and gotten the solution can confirm this. So I can beat my chest proudly and say that I won't take money from people. Because if I had wanted to take money, or if I had been taking money, or I was in the bad habit of taking money from people before doing what, um, using my God-given skill, ability, knowledge, and talent, and also using the platform that my employers have given me and the support that my team gives me, I would have been a billionaire yeah, by now. Nice. I would have two mansions to my credit. But I don't do that. And that is what is expressed there. No libi libi, no laba laba. And I'm sure she asked that because some other persons that she had gone to for help had put a fee to what help they could give to her. And this is what you get here on Sunrise and on Johnny's Bite. The scorecard is scorecarding. This is our performance tracker. Our performance tracker does not include things that have not been done and yet we say have been done. This is our performance tracker. Johnny's Bite. Nobody can backtrack or sidetrack our performance tracker. And if you track our performance tracker, you will not find it ridiculous and embarrassing. This is our performance tracker. So you, who is sent to come and attack, and you who support a tracker that is... Big, <coughs> you let me leave it here. Jenna, let's go on to the next issue. There's a new burger tax in town. And the Minister for Finance assures us that there's not going to be a new tax. And each time these things, these conversations come up, you have people vociferously defending and sometimes insulting people. And then the question that immediately comes to mind, and, and sometimes the impression is created that the people of the Republic of Ghana, citizens of Ghana, hardworking citizens of Ghana do not want to pay taxes or do not like to pay taxes. You can name many of the tax handles that were brought, communication service tax that was raised, um, e-levy, name them. The impression is always created that we, the people of Ghana, who fund those exorbitant lifestyles that they live, we do not want to pay taxes. And I find that very, very insulting, underwhelming, and humiliating. It's actually perfidious for anybody to make that suggestion. Because if you walk into your favorite supermarket and buy even a bottle of water and ask for a receipt, you will see the taxes on it. So how does anybody come to suggest in the first place that the hardworking people of Ghana do not like paying taxes? And so at every turn, when we have to introduce a new tax handle, we make the story and the narrative look like the people of Ghana are not helping, they are not supporting in trying to build Ghana and we do not want to pay taxes. I don't know where that mindset came from. But the people of Ghana have asked the president, with his vice president and his cabinet and everybody else who works with him, 
Those same set of people who will be sent this morning to go to radio, TV stations and, and be on their social media pages and to be preaching to us that we need to accept the tax handles that are being pushed at us. They have not been confident enough to tell the president that he needs to cut down on his elephant-sized government. The diplomats have told the president, cut down on your elephant-sized government. He says, no. Civil society organizations have told him, cut down on your elephant-sized government. He says, no. You have had academics tell him, cut down on your elephant-sized government. He says, no. And he continues to impose taxes on the people of Ghana, slap the taxes on the people of Ghana, burdening us. Fuel prices have gone up again today. Yesterday, I played a video of Dr. Baumia and Nana Kufuado talking about taxes and how they were going to reduce taxes and even move us from taxation to production. From taxation to production. We had been told that. So when will Nana Dodanko Kufuado cut down on the size of government? When you talk, they say, oh, yeah, we need this tax to be able to do this, so we are bringing this burger tax because you said we should not bring emission tax, we should not bring ECG tax. Okay, you, you can explain it away, but have you cut down on the size of your expenditure on your government? Because if I earn, say, 1,500 cities, and I can afford to chill every Friday, and suddenly I, I lose my job, touch wood, and get a job that pays me 1,000 CDs. I cannot be living the lifestyle I used to live when I was earning 1,500 CDs and was able to chill and still save. I can't. We say we are in a difficult situation. We have not been able to reach an agreement with our external bondholders because then we can't give them haircuts that they have not asked for, including dipping our hands into the pockets of pensioners. And we are still living as if we have everything. The president still has a chair in a V8. They still have the parties. Ex ex large, extravagant chilling. A tall list of appointees. You get to a ministry, there are three deputy ministers. Why are we doing this to ourselves? And I've always said that anybody, I, I, I grew up with older people. Anybody who saw President Kufuado in opposition and when he finally became president after 70 would have thought that the proverbial grandfather at home who would make sure that all his children have eaten before he eats. And even when he's eating, the best part of the food is passed on to the grandchildren. Anybody would have thought that that would be the attitude of our president. But no, he eats first before thinking about the people. And even when the crumbs are given to you, the oil is smeared on your lips to suggest that we have all eaten. We are in this together. That is where the we are in this together comes from. This morning, you find people come to defend the things I'm talking about. You just pay attention. Just scan the media landscape and listen to them. And you ask yourself, do these people live here with us or do they live elsewhere and flow in and flow out on a daily basis or what? Do they live here with us? Do they buy LPG 14.5 kg at 232 Ghana CDs with us? Or do they get theirs for free? Do they buy the same ECG that we buy? Do they feel it? Ah, well. Now... Show me the green letter from the presidency. Johnny's fight. This is a letter dated the 8th of April, 2024. It says, Dear Dr. Fori Tenkong, put the letter up. Termination of office and handing over. Reference is made to your appointment letter dated the 1st of July, 2019, issued by the Public Services Commission. In accordance with paragraph 8 of the said appointment letter, I regret to inform you that the president has terminated your appointment effective 15 April 2024 with three months salary in lieu of notice. You are directed to hand over your office to Mr. Kofi Bosompim Osafo Mafo, son of Yao Osafo Mafo, senior presidential advisor, and proceed to collect any terminal benefits you may be entitled to. To ensure a smooth transition, 
kindly hand over and cease to act as the Director General of the Social Security and National Insurance Trust no later than close of business on Monday, 15th April, 2024. The President thanks you for your service to the nation and extends his best wishes. Nana Bedie to our Santi Secretary to the President, copied to uh, Vice President, Chief of Staff, uh, Minister of Employment, the Board, Chairperson, the Chairperson, uh, PSC, and also uh, National Insurance Trust. So this letter was written, right? At the same time when Dr. Bonaventure Benedict Alegebam has refused to go home after all these letters have been written to him. He's the president's best friend, so he doesn't respect anybody. Johnny now, Vike. then show me the uh, letter from the presidency. Then conversation started in the media. Conversation started. Then the presidency wrote on the 13th of April. That for immediate release, it's a press release. Removal from Office of Director General of SNIT. Contrary to some speculations in the media, put it up, the Office of the President would like to place on record that the exit of Dr. John Ofori Tenkran from the position of Director General of SNIT has nothing to do with any form of misconduct or malfeasance on his part. Indeed, Dr. Ofori Tenkran's exit from office is part of the ongoing restructuring. Note this. Ongoing restructuring of government being undertaken by President Ekufuado. The president is satisfied with the performance of Dr. Ofori Tenkran as Director General of SNIT in the past seven years as the institution under his watch witnessed some impressive transformation. The president thanks him for his services to the nation. Eugene Ahin, Director of Communications, Office of the President. Does it smell like the Domelevo sack? And people are receiving green letters all over the place. Professor Adai says he was at home when he saw a new board being instituted for GRE. They sacked him without his knowledge. But there's something you should know. Now, I've read for you two letters. There's a document that is flying around, and people are pretending that we haven't seen the document. Johnny's right. Franklin Kujo asks the question, what the president's grand scheme is. He says, first, it was the GRA board and his commissioner Johnny's that got right. asked crudely by an executive fiat. No reasons given. However, under the previous board, Ghana has, for the first time, attained 14% tax to GDP from 11 uh, to 12% for many years, a critical milestone under Ghana's IMF program. Now, SNIT's director general who has nine months left of his tenure, has been sacked by the president with immediate effect. There are no reasons given for terminating the DG. GRA sacks a retiree 63 and brings in a retiree at 61. Franklin continues, the DG's foresight and a bit of luck prevented our pensions from the unforgiving jaws of the cantankerous debt restructuring program by holding minimal government paper. The DG's leadership has been unrepentant in chasing government arrears and expanding coverage to the self-employed. Gihok owed Snit. They took them to court. Ufori Tinkran chased him into court to pay. The leadership has managed to divest Snit's ownership to hotels to prevent uh, hemorrhaging pension funds. Critical, crucially, Snit has been scaling down on real estate investment, which has never been profitable, but beloved by politicians with control over SNIT. The replacement in these two institutions, GRA and SNIT, are seen by many as very pliant, political obedient. And that is dangerous. What exactly is the president's grand plan? Grand plan. Consolidate his base or push through curious contracts this last hour. These whimsical acts, without explanation, actually hurts the country, his government, party, and Dr. Baumia. And let me tell you, a deputy director general of SNIT, Dr. Ado, uh, Mr. Michael Ado, he has resigned in protest. Now show me the document that has been flying around. There's a document called the Japadia document. And many have pretended that they haven't seen the document. And this is where I expect that the presidency would find space to respond to it. Find space to respond to it. Because, you know, in the last election, 
Mr. Eugenine told us when Martin Amidu did his corruption risk assessment and called the president the mother serpent of all corruption and that he does not believe that the president can fight corruption today, yesterday, and even tomorrow, Eugenine said they have their eyes on the, an election to win and after the elections, he will, re, he will, he will respond to Martin Amidu. It has been three years and counting. He wants to go to parliament himself. That answer is with him. Just as our Al Jazeera answer is with them on the gold mafia saga, Alessia Mathias. Let's read the document Chinese together. Bite. Let's read a portion on Ecobank. We are late. Now, paragraph II says, we have two routes of entry into this institution. First, through SNIT, which has a seat on the board of Ecobank Ghana by virtue of its shareholding. This is page six of the Japadia report. The seat is occupied by the Director General of SNIT. In phase two of our agenda, Kofi Bosumpim Osafomafo, who is a Deputy Director General of SNIT, should be made the DG to give him the seat on the Ecobank Ghana board. Secondly, the wife of Ace Ankuma is the group head of commercial banking and a member of the executive management of the e e Ecobank Bank. Um, Ecoban Group. Our intelligent is that both the role of the group CEO and managing director of Ecobank Ghana will become vacant in the next two years, two, three years. Nana has been advised to use all diplomatic avenues to support a Sankoma's wife to fill one of these impending vacancies. This is captured in page six of the Japadia document. And that's why I'm inviting government to clear their own this because there have been too many speculations and too many questions. And I'm not endorsing this document. I'm asking questions. Because within the period, what is captured in this document that the, the SNIT DG will be changed by Osafo Mafo's son or replaced with Osafo Mafo's son has happened. Now, there's mention of lawyer Isankuma's wife Jane, did that also happen? Is there a press cutting? Big, beautiful. Graphic business captured on the August 19, 2018 at 9.35 p.m. that Ecobank appoints Josephine Annan and Kuma as group executive. It is there. I didn't put it there. So now, when people start seeing graphic business, they start seeing green letter from the jubilee house they see a response from eugene ahin they see franklin kujo's post they see many other people's posts and then they read the japadia document again and they see that the things that have been written in this document which was in the public domain more than three or so years ago are playing out again they ask what franklin kujo asked what is the grand scheme and they asked the question that was asked, the understanding to that question that was asked in that letter that was written in the first green letter to Dr. Fori Tinkran, that what is this restructuring that President Akufuado is doing? And is there a plan yeah, towards right. state capture? I'm asking questions. Is there a plan towards state capture? And in whose benefit would this state capture be? And why is this happening at this particular time? Questions. I'll leave you to answer. Have a good morning.